length of an interval. This is continuing on with our work in geometry and the last lesson we looked at the midpoint. So today we're going to be looking at the length. So the length of an interval is the distance between two points and we can find that using Pythagoras' theorem. So if we can imagine I have my two points here and before when we were looking at midpoint we were finding the length of an interval. So if I look from here to here I can see it goes from minus 1 to negative 3, so that's 2 units. And here I'm going 1, 2, 3 units. And you can see that I've formed a right angle triangle. Now once we have a right angle triangle, I think you all know that we can use Pythagoras. So if this length here is called C, I would just use Pythagoras and say that C squared is equal to 2 squared plus 3 squared. And I would work this out. So 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 9 and 4 is 13, so that's what c squared is equal to. So c would it be equal to the square root of 13. And I could just leave my answer in exact form. So let's have a look at a couple of ex examples, just using my graph and this form, this idea of using Pythagoras' theorem. So if I have a look at this first example, I've got negative 4, negative 2, which is p, which is shown down here. And then I've got my other point, q. And the first thing we need to do, because it's graphed, is we just look along here and we see how many units this is. And you can see I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units. So knowing that Pythagoras' theorem, I'm going to just say that PQ squared is going to be equal to 6 squared plus 8 squared. And so if I work that out, 6 squared and 8 squared is 36 and 64, which gives me 100. And so to find PQ by itself, I'm just going to take the square root of 100, which gives me the answer of 10. And I'm just going to say units because I really don't know what measurement this is in. So if we go and have a look at the very next example, we're going to use exactly the same procedure. So looking at this one, you can see I've got my two sides of my right angle triangle and I'm trying to find the length AB. So Pythagoras' theorem says that the hypotenuse, which is AB squared, is equal to one side squared plus the other side squared. And if we work this one out, 7 squared is 49, uh, 4 squared is 16. So the answer to this one is 65. So to find AB by itself, I'm going to take the square root of that. Now if I put that on my calculator, I'm going to get a decimal answer. I'm just going to be precise here. It hasn't said what to round to, so I'm just going to keep it in exact form, which is the, the form without having to put it in my calculator. Now the cool thing about this, and remember I got excited about midpoint, is this finding Pythagoras, the first thing we've done is really find this distance along the ground here. And to do that, we've really done a subtraction of my x values. Before we've looked at it on the graph, but an easier way to do it would be take one of my x values and subtract the other x value, and that would give me the distance along here. If I do the same for my y values, that's going to give me my distance along here. And then when we're always getting my answer in Pythagoras' theorem, I'm always taking the square root of that, which produces this beautiful formula. And I know you're going to be as excited about this as I am. Now, looks very scary. It's not really. All I'm doing is defining each of my points x1, y1, and the other point x2, y2. Doesn't matter which order you do it in, you're always going to get the same answer because we're taking a square, which gets rid of any negatives. We'll also be taking the square root of it. Now this formula is on your formula sheet. So I would probably take some time now to pause the video and make sure that you know where that is. Okay, so let's have a look at this in practice. Find the distance between the points correct to one decimal place. So let's have a look at what this is going to look like. The first thing that you're all going to do is you're always going to write down your distance formula. So we're finding A. So the distance formula is um, x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared 
and we're taking the square root of that. So the first thing you're always going to do is go to your formula sheet and write down the formula to show everyone that you know what you're doing. Now, on your points, you're just going to label it x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. doesn't matter which order you do it in. So once you've done that, it's just a simple case of replacing each of these letters with the numbers. So x2 in this case is going to be 2, take away negative 4, and I'm going to square the whole thing, plus y2 which is negative 2, take away y1 which is 3, and I'm squaring that, and I'm taking the square root. Now because we are asked for a decimal answer, you can just put all of that in your calculator, and then I would write down some of those numbers, so 7.81024. And so the distance is going to be approximately equal to 7.8 uh, units. And this was given to one decimal place, which is what the question had asked us for. So now, having a look at B, we're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to write the formula out again, but we can write down x1 y1, x2, and y2. Of course, in an exam, you would be writing that formula out. So we're trying to find the distance between these two points. So d equals, and now I'm just going to substitute everything into the formula. So in this case, it's going to be negative 2, take away 6, all squared, plus y2, which is 4, take away negative 3, and I'm putting that in brackets because all sorts of strange things happen when we forget to put a bracket around that negative number. And then we put this into our calculator and we get 10.6301, something along these lines. And then I'm rounding this to one decimal place, which is what the question asks, so it's 10.6 units. Okay. I hope that makes sense to you. It should just be revision for all of you, but it's good to touch on it again. So we have chapter 13 on page 541. You're to do exercise 3H plus the distance formula worksheet, which is also in your OneNote file. Um, and I will see you very shortly.